I think just to just because the dispossessed is in my on my mind right now, but just the thing I like about that book in particular is just how, um, as you mentioned, it's it's like you're walking toward this aspirational sort of like there's an aspiration of what you want to be. Anarchism is not a destination; it's about a journey towards something. It's moving towards something. So people actually talk about socialism as well. I often hear it described yeah, in this way, totally, right? Um, and yeah, there are obviously problems in this society that the main character is contending with. Um, yeah. And then coming to another society, which is a capitalist, patriarchal society, very similar to our own, um, that we are born into and uh, seeing the obvious. It's interesting because you're looking at it through their lens, their eyes and seeing like, oh, what would it be like to be from a communal based society to a society that is very hierarchical, class based patriarchal obsessed with property and ownership <laughs> you yeah. know what would that look like and it kind of gives you like an a like an alien but a sort of an outsider point of view yeah um so yeah you know and, and i think one thing that really struck with me is like um i think when i came into the book i felt the sense of self idealism like this is going to be the perfect society hence a utopia but there's still these things that are very human and very much part of, I think, a large-scale organized society, which is about these sort of hidden hierarchies and authorities yeah. that exist, right? Um, so I think that there's a sense of, of – I'm trying to think of how to talk about this. It's like – it's it's almost can feel a bit discouraging, because you think like human beings, mm -hmm. like there's something bad about human beings. Like there's always going to be this germ of like like an original sin or something, a very Christian notion. <laughs> very, the sense of like there's always going to be those psychopaths. There's always going to be those mm -hmm. people that are going to try to make hierarchies in a situation where it's not necessary or doesn't actually exist. There's always going to be this inclination toward even when the best things start happening and people are building this incredible egalitarian project, there's always going to be people consciously or subconsciously trying to replicate the worst aspects of human nature and the human condition. Yeah. And um, I don't think, and I think what I like about Le Guin in particular, and, and just, I think writers that think in this nuanced fashion, and I think you're in this category as well, is it's not so simple. It's not so cut and dry. And there's no, the dichotomies don't really help. And this sort of dualistic thinking doesn't actually really help. Yeah. Um, how do you, I guess, in, in your work and in your writing kind of contend with some of those complexities and nuances? How do you personally try to write through, like, what does writing serve for you and being able to work through some of those, maybe, yeah, those are complex or, or vague or kind of grayish areas of, of the human condition? That is a good question. And I, I think about some of the specific times I've done it. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I write stories that are kind of intentionally either parables or kind of working through a concept. Not always, right? Uh, in my book of short stories, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be things that are like, I don't know, it's about a witch who keeps a weird thing in her basement, you know? Yeah. And that's like, there's no, I mean, obviously my like sense of how the world works ties into that story, but Can that's I just a... Can I just make it aside that you do write effectively in a way that like I get kind of creeped out when I read some of your stories, oh, cool. which is just awesome. as like a compliment yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but then I think about, okay, I have another story to spoil a short story. I'll, I'll try not to hardcore spoil it. I wrote this story called uh, We Will Destroy the Future. And mm -hmm. it's this, the premise is that 2016 Ohio is like the worst time and place in history where you still have a decent life expectancy. So it's the, it's where the future exiles time prisoners, uh, right? Mm. Like if you fuck up, they send you back to the early 20th century, uh, Ohio. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, okay, so I'm, and, and that was mostly because it's like fun to write that kind of thing and sort of yeah. talk shit on Middle America and you know whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, the the tension in the story is that there's a character who wants to take revenge on the future, mm -hmm. and you know it tries to bring the protagonist into that plot, right? Mm -hmm. And in a way, that you know nihilist, I guess I could say 
is the uh, is the villain of the story, right? But they're not the the time cops of the future are the villains of the story, um, even though there is a a active conflict and tension, mm-hmm. basically between a nihilist position and a non-nihilist position. And I don't mean to oversimplify nihilism. I, nihilism has a million different definitions, and I'm using mm-hmm. this one kind of specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes I write about that but my villain needs to have a good reason he can't just be like i want to see it all burn i mean he does he wants to see it all burn Mm -hmm. but like you gotta know why he he wants to see it all burn you know because like overall people well like all of us are rational and irrational all of us are doing what we do based on the way we view the world and the way we think we should handle the way that we view the world you know Mm -hmm. um you actually brought up a really interesting point right you brought up original sin yeah and okay here's where everyone's gonna stop being my friend i think original (laughs) sin's a really interesting theological concept Mm -hmm. um and i think it's a really liberatory one when it is done right the way that power structures have told us original sin what it means i'm not so excited about yeah. But this concept, this theological concept that like, well, of course you're fucked up. You're a person. All you got to do <laughs> is try to not be fucked up, but know that you'll stay fucked up because you're a person and you'll never really be completely unfucked up. But that doesn't exempt you from the process of trying to be less fucked up. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. I think mm-hmm. that is a really accurate way to understand some aspects of the human condition. And and also, theoretically, it's a non-carceral system of solution where you go and you tell someone, hey, I fucked up. And they're like, yeah, I guess you did. Mm-hmm. You're going to keep fucking up? Probably, but I don't want to. Yeah. All right. Well, here's a way to try and make peace with yourself about it. Again, the way that a lot of good ideas become bad ideas once they're structured into power, right? Um, but so... We need to write about characters that are flawed. You know, I mean, the protagonist of The Dispossessed more or less sexually assaults someone in the middle of the book. Yeah. Um, I remember we we reread it as part of a, as an anarchist reading group. And like, we're all like, whoa, we forgot about that part. Yeah. Um, That was a rough chapter. That was a rough chapter reading I don't think Le Guin handled that great. No. Um, it. Well, I'm not far enough in the book. It's just immediately after that, that scene, basically, in oh, the book okay. where I'm at. Uh-huh. So he's seemingly trying to deal with the... the. But he was drunk in this... Sorry, spoilers, yeah, yeah. everybody. But this guy was drunk and he assaults a woman um, yeah. and sleeps it off and then begins to work on his physics problems. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so I don't know. I, didn't, yeah. I, I think it could have been written a slightly more nuanced or comprehensive way. But anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. But it's like... You know what? Like everyone's flawed, and no yeah. no book and no author and no concept or story are perfect. And the more that we can address that, the better we are. Um, mm. So, and I think it's kind of interesting, right? It was a. Uh, I'm just going to shout out everyone I interviewed in that book. Apparently, uh, the concept of the antihero in fiction was a big deal in like 60s and 70s counterculture fiction. And uh, one of the main people who spearheaded that was an anarchist named Michael Moorcock, who's also in the book that you can go read. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. And and it's funny because the concept of the antihero was this idea that your protagonist is flawed and you know has not pure moral systems and is still trying to do something that is overall considered good in the larger picture of things, you know. And it was like an interesting break from these like perfect hero characters right and we needed that break but now the anti-hero like some people do it right but it's largely just a way to be like isn't it cool and fun when men are just a bunch of dicks you know <laughs> yeah. and like let's all heroize this like drunk asshole as a piece of shit mm, mm-hmm. and so like once again you have this thing that like start off really cool and then like <laughs> guy is real shitty yeah um mm-hmm. which i'll be real is like one of my biggest fears as a writer Mm. is to be successfully prominent enough 
to 100 years from now, people like enact my ideas and do it to be fucked up. Oh, yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. there's no way you can. There's no way you can defeat that. Like, I think about this, right? Like a country of ghosts doesn't talk about gender much. I mean, mm -hmm. it talks about like some sexuality stuff, you know, and, you know, rights of women. But there's like, for example, there's like no trans stuff in it, right? right. What if 100 years from now, like future TERFs pick up on it and create a like future TERF society based on a country of ghosts that's like super TERFy because yeah. I didn't specifically put in the book. And the difference between sex and gender is important and, you know, people yeah. express themselves in different ways. And, you know, because like, like that could totally happen. There's no fucking 